Greetings. I am Mike McConnell, and I teach physics at Cinnaminson High School in Cinnaminson, New Jersey. I am contacting you to introduce the Spreadsheet Lab Manual. Proficiency on a spreadsheet is a 21st century skill that will benefit your students tremendously in the future. Because you are a busy professional, I have labeled each subject area of the presentation and ordered them as shown so that you can skip to your subject-specific demonstration. For more information, please go to the website. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. My goal is your success and your student's success with spreadsheets. The Spreadsheet Lab Manual provides classroom ready activities for student use as well as teacher training materials to incorporate spreadsheets into any high school curriculum. Many scholars state that the spreadsheet is an outstanding tool for modeling. It is also a widely used and essential tool for the American workforce. There is an endless list of job areas that use spreadsheets. In addition, students pursuing a wide variety of majors will end up taking classes in college that require the use of spreadsheets. The goal of the Spreadsheet Lab Manual is to have your students gain experience working on spreadsheets, creating and then analyzing mathematical models, creating graphs and then altering variables and observing changes in the graphs, using a variety of spreadsheet functions, and thinking critically to solve problems on a spreadsheet will all be possible starting next school year with the adoption of this program. Students pursuing higher education and careers will surely benefit from expanding their exposure to spreadsheets and, more importantly, learn valuable skills to bring with them in the future. Among the activities that are included in the, in the Spreadsheet Lab Manual are Terminal Velocity, which is available and free for all to download on the website, along with 10 curriculum-aligned physics activities including projectiles with air resistance, rocket motion, electric field calculations, and many more. Emphasis on mathematical applications for biology and environmental science is expanding, and two separate population modeling activities including an ideal versus logistic model and a predator-prey model will satisfy that need, in addition to exposing the students to graphing and interpreting a scientific model. Students studying mathematical functions on a spreadsheet will be able to focus on mathematical behavior rather than mechanical steps when, the change of, when they change a variable and a graph instantly changes. To interact with math in this way will be a new and beneficial learning experience. And the same goes for calculations in chemistry such as limiting reacting calculations and titrations. Also, Newton's law of cooling becomes possible without calculus and is easily understood by students of a number, on a number of different levels. This is the student handout for the physics activity terminal velocity that is available free for download on the website. All of the activities are formatted the same, starting with an objective, discussion section, governing equations, procedures that indicate exactly what formulas to place into what cells, procedures for constructing graphs, and then analysis questions to assess the content objectives, and development questions to assess the spreadsheet objectives in constructing a spreadsheet model. This model simulates terminal velocity, and this demonstrates a 50 kilogram skydiver with the in a headfirst dive with cross-sectional area of 0.1 meters squared, drag coefficient of 0.6, and time increment. The terminal velocity can be observed on the graph on where it levels off can be viewed more precisely in the velocity column on the spreadsheet, which is leveling off at around 90.4 meters per second. If the students wanted to put that skydiver from a head-first dive into a belly-first position, they would increase the cross-sectional area, and they would see that now the terminal velocity levels off more quickly and at a lower value as a result of that increase in cross-sectional area. They could then test what would happen if the skydiver was to have a larger mass by increasing the mass to 95 kilograms, holding the other variables constant, they would see that the terminal velocity levels off at a higher value, 50.8 meters per second. Another activity the students can conduct is this study that investigates projectiles with air assistance called comparing trajectories. It compares the ideal trajectory, which is shown in blue, to the real trajectory shown in red. This demonstrates a golf shot which is experiencing air resistance. We could change the launch angle to 60 degrees if a different club was used, and that would change the trajectory, show it at a higher angle, and it would actually reach a shorter distance. We could alter a variable, such as the drag factor, 0.25. An increase in drag factor would result in a decrease in trajectory. If we return the drag factor to its original value and increase the mass of the projectile from 0.143, which is the mass of a standard golf ball, to 
to 8, which is about double, then that would show an increase in range because increasing the mass of a projectile will cause it to have less of an effect due to air resistance. So all the different variables up top could be investigated by the students and they could study a wide range of phenomena. They could also study titration in chemistry class with this titration simulation, which shows the neutralization curve taking place here that plots pH versus base added. The acid volume and acid molarity are the given values, and the volume of base added is uh, determined in this increment, and the concentration of the base added is specified here. Uh, the students could increase the volume of acid being added, and the neutralization would take place at a later point. They could also increase the concentration of the acid that's being added, which would also cause titration to take place later. If they want to use a higher concentration that couldn't be neutralized in the range that was being viewed, they could increase the volume increment to 0.1 milliliters, and they could view neutralization on that graph. They could try different con combinations of different concentrations and see that titrations of all different types can be viewed. The students can also solve for an unknown acid concentration in cell B2 using GoalSeq. GoalSeq is essentially computerized trial and error. So assume that 103 milliliters of base is added to the acid to cause neutralization. If that's the case, then the pH, when 103 milliliters of base has been added, which is in row 1037 and column F, that pH will be equal to 7 because neutralization will have taken place and we can set that cell to be equal to a value of 7 by changing cell B2, the unknown acid concentration. And what will happen is goal seek will try all different values of the acid concentration until it leaves the correct acid concentration 5.165 molar in cell B2 which can show on the graph that neutralization takes place at 103 milliliters. Another thing the students will be able to do is zoom in on the neutralization point which will allow them to see the small vo volume interval of base that will cause neutralization to take place in a way that they wouldn't be able to experimentally. To be able to study titration in this way will not only allow students to understand titration at deeper levels but will also expose them to programming on a spreadsheet as they construct the simulation from scratch and allow them to have practice solving problems and think critically while working on a spreadsheet. Another activity that can be constructed is a population study that compares an ideal population model that grows exponentially to a logistic population model that grows exponentially initially but is limited by a competitive factor that causes the population to level off over time. The logistic model can have the competitive factor varied by increasing it by a factor of three the population will level off at a much lower value. By decreasing the competitive factor by a factor of 10, it can be shown that the logistic model predicts that the population will level off at a higher value with less competition, causing individuals to limit their growth. The ideal model in both these cases has been unchanged because it only considers the growth factor. However, the ideal model can't be viewed over as long of a time period as the logistic model because as the logistic model levels off, the ideal model will grow without bound. This can be demonstrated by simply increasing the time increment. So increasing the time increment to 2.5 causes the ideal and logistic model to be viewed over a longer time frame, which will not increase the maximum value for the logistic model, but will increase the maximum value for the ideal model. And as we continue to increase the time, the ideal model continues to grow exponentially without bound, which demonstrates how an ideal population model that grows exponentially can be somewhat unrealistic. However, there are many applications of ideal population growth, including human population growth, bacterial growth initially, and then the logistic model applies when resources become limited. So this is a good study for students in biology and environmental science, particularly in this day and age. Although the population models are mathematical in nature, they are intended to be conducted by students in biology and environmental science. 
This function study allows students to manipulate graphs and study the behavior of mathematical functions by altering the function and the range over which the function is displayed. The concept of infinitely small could be studied on a hyperbola by entering y equals 1 over x in column B and then double clicking the fill handle to display a hyperbola on the graph. The students could then zoom in on the asymptote by choosing a smaller starting value and smaller increment by entering zeros to the right of the decimal point. They could zoom in on the asymptote from the positive side by choosing a small positive increment and then by choosing smaller and smaller starting values and increments they can attempt to reach the y-axis and regardless of the number of zeros they enter in they'll never actually reach the y-axis however what they will see is as they choose smaller and smaller starting values and increments the y-axis gets infinitely large as the x-axis gets infinitely small and studying mathematical behavior in this way is not possible by hand but can be done easily and quickly on a spreadsheet a spreadsheet is an amazingly versatile tool that can be used for limitless applications in science it is also widely used in the working world and in higher education the Spreadsheet Lab Manual provides electronic copies of 20 STEM activities ranging from 1 hour to 2 hours in length. Introductory PowerPoint presentations, answer keys with full descriptions of required spreadsheet manipulations, and electric, electronic copies of the spreadsheets are also included. In addition, there are 9 quick training activities that can also be used in class along with materials to guide teachers in curriculum alignment and planning. All of the can be used for students in class, as well as by teachers getting started with Excel for professional development. Student data as to their effectiveness is available on the website, and I urge you to visit and contact me immediately if you are interested. The spreadsheet improves worker accuracy and efficiency and productivity, and it is my goal to make it available to teachers, even those that have little or no training in this area. Student success and ease of implementation for teachers were top priorities in writing the activities provided with this program. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the Spreadsheet Lab Manual, and I hope to hear from you very soon.